Hello and welcome, it's Dr. Fred Frizzle here and today I'm going to be talking, talking to you about how, how the blood glucose concentration is actually increased as opposed to decreased like I did in my last video. Um, so the pancreas, um, its endocrine function, I forgot to mention last time, endocrine. Endocrine means means that, that things are secreted directly into the blood, okay? So the exocrine function of the, kid, of the pancreas I didn't mention, which is where things are secreted into a duct which then can lead to somewhere else okay so endocrine just means um, ductless almost it means it doesn't use a duct in order to transport things from one place to another okay so the endocrine function is the secretion of hormones I mean in my last video I discussed with you how insulin is relate is um, regulated and how it is used to bring about a number of effects in the cell in order to reduce the concentration of blood glucose um, in this video, I'd like to talk to you about um, how the hormone glucagon can actually, can actually increase the level of glucose in the blood. Okay, so first of all, uh, glucagon is, is released from, from the, same, the same almost component part of the, uh, of the pancreatic system, but it, it's, re it's released from the islets of Langerhans. Now, what? or islets, islets of Langerhans, I'm not entirely sure how you pronounce this, so don't sort of hold me up on that. Um, so, islets of Langerhans, which is probably because someone called, called Mr. Could call Mr. Langerans came up with it, but, but anyway, so, so islets of Langerhans are the name of, is the tissue name, where each of these two hormones is actually produced um, but the specific cells, as I mentioned last time, there's beta cells which is the Greek letter beta, beta cells secrete insulin and I described how they did that in detail with like a mistake to do with potassium um, secretion but I, I corrected that in the video so hopefully you can forgive that and in this one I'll, I'll talk, to you, talk to you about how alpha cells which alpha is another Greek letter, alpha cells are capable of secreting glucagon so, so I'm not going to go into too much detail in terms of the mechanisms it, in, order, in order for glucagon to actually be secreted from alpha, from alpha cells, but I can go into detail in, with how glucagon actually interacts with the target cells. Okay, so I discussed a few words with you last time, like gluconeogenesis was one, which is where uh, glucose is formed from non-carbohydrate substrates. Okay. So if glucose is formed from non-carbohydrate substrates like fatty acids and amino acids, of course, in these target cells, of course this is going to lead to an increase in blood glucose. Because say these, these substances are here, that they're, 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 they're actually getting respired, they've entered, they've entered this like, target cell, for example, I'll label this fatty acid, it will get respired and and when it's respired into glucose, the breakdown of this fatty acid into glucose is known as gluconeogenesis. Um, so once that's broken down, then it will, it will release glucose because it's broken down into glucose, and glucose will flow down its concentration gradient because it will build up in here, in this target cell, and it will flow into the blood. So I'll label this blood. And, and that will increase the level of glucose in the blood. Um, there's another one known as glycogenolysis. So in my last video with you, I discussed how glycogen was a better way of storing glucose than, than actually storing it specifically specifically as glucose because otherwise it would bloat cells and, and it would start to, and it would diffuse between cells and stuff. So basically glycogenolysis, the breakdown of glycogen, is going to break down this storage molecule back into glucose and then that will also increase the blood glucose level concentration because um, because blood glucose level because glucose levels sorry, will, will sort of increase in this target cell here and then it will diffuse back into the blood and so that will also bring about that effect um, the, uh, and there's also a number of different things that can happen um, so for example we might reduce respiration rate now because you know that you should hopefully know by now anyway that respiration is the process of releasing, uh, of actually breaking down glucose in order to release energy from it. Now, now glucose, supposing glucose is broken down, 
if, if all the glucose has been broken down, then there'll be no glucose left to diffuse into the blood. So, so if we reduce our, our rate of respiration, uh, if we reduce our metabolic rate, uh, and this is sort of known as, as a general term, some metabolism, it is the, the whole idea of chemical reactions just taking place in the body. Respiration, respiration is an example of one chemical reaction. So if we reduce the, our metabolic rate, then it will reduce the rate of respiration in turn, um, and, and this will also lead to an lead to an increase in blood glucose because less glucose will be used in respiration in order to in order to, to be like converted into AT, in order to release ATP in which, which sort of is the energy currency of cells. So so we'll obviously have less energy to use, but we'll also have be able to increase our blood glucose level in this by this method as well. It, that's not quite as obvious as these top two, but that's another method in in which that can happen. So anyway, I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video, and that's pretty much all I want to talk to you about today. So hope you've enjoyed it, and see you in the next video.